EPCO Educational Topic Number 16, Spontaneous Abortion. Spontaneous abortion is the loss of a pregnancy before 20 weeks gestation. It affects up to 20% of recognized pregnancies. Note that medically, the term abortion refers to miscarriage. This differs from the terms elective, therapeutic, or induced abortions, which will be addressed in a separate video. Approximately 80% of spontaneous abortions occur in the first 12 weeks of a pregnancy. The objectives of this video are to review the differential diagnosis for first trimester vaginal bleeding and to differentiate the types, causes, complications, and treatment options for spontaneous abortion. The differential diagnosis for vaginal bleeding in the first trimester includes spontaneous abortion, viable intrauterine pregnancy, and ectopic pregnancy. When a woman presents with vaginal bleeding in the first trimester, therefore, it is essential to first determine the location of the pregnancy and whether the pregnancy will ultimately be viable. Serial beta-HCG values and transvaginal ultrasound tests give us diagnostic information to help us make the diagnosis. Over a 48-hour period, the beta-HCG value should rise at least 50%. If the beta-HCG decreases over a 48-hour period, then the pregnancy is not a viable pregnancy. This could be a spontaneous abortion, or it could still be an ectopic pregnancy. The rule of tens is a simple way of remembering some important beta-HCG landmarks. The beta-HCG peaks at approximately 10 weeks, estimated gestational age at approximately 100,000. It then decreases, and at term, it's about 10,000. On transvaginal ultrasound, a gestational sac can usually be identified around four and a half to five weeks estimated gestational age, a yolk sac between five and six weeks, and a fetal pull with cardiac activity between five and a half to six weeks. There are four definitions that are important to remember pertaining to spontaneous abortion. For a complete abortion, all of the products have been passed without the need for any intervention and the cervix is closed. In an incomplete abortion, some but not all of the products have passed and the cervix is open. In an inevitable abortion, the cervix is dilated, but the products of conception have not been passed. In a missed abortion, there has been a fetal demise, usually for a number of weeks, but the products have not been expelled. The most common cause of spontaneous abortion in the first trimester is chromosomal abnormalities. 50% of recognized early spontaneous abortions are attributed to chromosomal abnormalities, most of which are trisomies. Increasing maternal age will thus increase the risk of chromosome abnormalities, which will thus increase the risk of spontaneous abortion. Compared to first trimester abortions, second trimester abortions are less likely to be caused by chromosomal abnormalities and can be caused by maternal systemic disease, abnormal placentation, or other anatomic considerations. Other risk factors are less well-defined and are much less common and include a history of spontaneous abortion, smoking, having an IUD in place, and uncontrolled diabetes. Of note, moderate caffeine consumption is not a risk factor for miscarriage, and this brings up an important point that many patients need reassurances that drinking moderate coffee, having sex, or exercising did not contribute to their miscarriage. Many women need to go through a grieving process after a pregnancy loss, and it is important to provide appropriate support for this process. There are three options when a woman has a spontaneous abortion. Expectant management is fine, and some women may want to see if their body will spontaneously miscarry. Surgical evacuation of the pregnancy can be performed with either a dilation and curettage in the operating room or a manual vacuum aspiration in a clinic setting. The third treatment option is medical management, which can be performed in the first trimester with vaginal mesoprostol. Remember that if a patient is RH negative, she will need a rogam injection to protect against isoimmunization in future pregnancies. Let's conclude by discussing possible complications from spontaneous abortion. Hemorrhage may occur around the time of spontaneous passage of the pregnancy or related to surgical evacuation of the pregnancy. If a patient presents with heavy vaginal bleeding with retained products of conception, then a surgical evacuation should be performed. Endometritis after spontaneous evacuation or spontaneous passage of the pregnancy should be treated with oral broad-spectrum antibiotics. It is very rare now for a patient to develop a septic abortion for this was much more prevalent in the past before the legalization of elective terminations. The signs and symptoms of a septic abortion are fevers, chills, lower abdominal discomfort, and foul-smelling vaginal discharge. This concludes the APCO video on spontaneous abortion. We have reviewed the important diagnostic criteria and therapeutic options for this common condition in women.